Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome, welcome to Conversations with Jeff on a Thursday morning. Coming to you live from Houston, Texas, right? What a beautiful day in Houston. Hey, I'm excited for today's conversation with Jeff. The gentleman that you're going to see in a couple of minutes is, is just a beautiful man, father, server of our country, entrepreneur, and, and just a man that, you know, as always, we like to bring people in here to help you overcome the conversations going on in your head, right? And then, and I'm going to take a moment while people get in and just share a little bit about why and how conversations with Jeff ever came about, right? You know, I was, because I, you know, I'm a, I'm a student of self-development most of my life. And, and, you know, I found out through a conversation that I had with a young lady. Uh, who I've been working with, and she said to me, she said, you know what? She gave me a nickname, and I love it. You know, you know I'm, I'm the Morpheus of self-development, right? And for those of you that have been around for a while, you know you've seen the show, The Matrix, and, and the movie, and, and Morpheus, and, and Neo, and all that stuff. Well, if you haven't, go check it out. But here's the, here's the message, and my message with that was, because, you know, at the end of the day, Neo was the hero, the baddest dude on the planet. And Morpheus, although he was powerful, right, his greatest gift, his greatest gift was helping people change the conversations going on in their heads about themselves, right? Neil never thought that he was going to be the one as he ended up being. But Morpheus saw that, right? And I'm not saying I got Morpheus powers, none of that. <laughs> so work with me, right? What I'm talking to you about is my desire to, to step into the conversation going on in your head, not only me, but bring the type of people that are committed to stepping into the conversations going on in your head, sharing with the conversations that were going on in their head that held them back and the things they've done to, to get into the next level, right? Next capabilities, next level, next, you know, the results are all going to change. And I gotta tell you, that really lit me up, you know, and I only got one more minute. I wanna just give you a quick story. Who would have thought today that you'd be listening to me? The guy, the kid who barely got out of high school, I mean, failed the first grade, struggled with reading. I mean, all the stories around that, even though I grew up, not bragging, I was, I was a great athlete, all those things, that story kept running in my head and it still shows up today, right? Jeff, do you think people really want to hear what you have to say? <laughs> do you, you know, what is it that, why do you think people want to hear what you have to say? But there's a different conversation in my head today. And folks like this young man that I'm going to bring to the, the screen here is going to tell you why. I want to give you a couple of quick things about this gentleman. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a father, family man. He's a server of our country, right? I mean, he's a businessman. Uh, he's, he's, he's a guy that says, this is what I'm going to do and finds a way to get it done. You know, ladies and gentlemen, sit down. Let me introduce to you my friend, Oliver Perry coming to you from the East Coast, baby. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, let's get him on here. Hey, Oliver, how are you, man? Good, Jeff. How are you, sir? Oh, uh, doing fantastic. Doing fantastic. fantastic. Good wonderful, you. wonderful. Good to see you, man. I've never been called beautiful. I, I'm not sure if I want to continue the interview. We could actually stop and cut it all right there. We can <laughs> end right on that note as beautiful. That'd be like the entire episode. I'm sure the fans would love it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, well, that smile just lights up the world, man. Come on, I right? appreciate it, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, I didn't tell, I just gave some highlights about who you are, man. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we only got a short period of time this morning. So why okay. don't we just kind of dive right in, you know? Let's do it. And, uh, as we talked about before the session, why don't you just kind of give us a little peek behind okay. the scenes of who you are, and we'll go from there. Okay, Jeff already told you I'm a military officer. I am a, a father of two girls and a husband. Um, and he also talked about my businesses. So I'm in real estate. I'm also in, I do a lot of marketing and branding. I am a huge fan of marketing and branding as well as the real estate piece. I've actually got my own podcast called The Oliver Perry Show as well as YouTube and IG and Twitter. What else am I at? TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, uh, LinkedIn as well, and each each different platform are all secondary, really secondary and tertiary to the YouTube. That's where my main effort is as of right now. And the idea is to build a brand, to build a brand that I can do things with, attract you know people who want to work with me, 
um, attract people who want to do some real estate investing, but as well, those who are looking to build and understand and learn how to build their own brand in real estate. So it's something I'm kind of working around and playing with, and it's constantly changing because I'm constantly changing, but it stays just about in that realm. Yeah, and I want to just speak to the branding part because I've gone back and looked at where you started. Right. And ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, you know, this guy is busy, but he continues to just rise and raise the bar. You know, what, what are some of the things, Oliver, that you can share that you, I mean, anytime you go for a higher goal, you run into mm -hmm. obstacles. So mm -hmm. what's it like, military, family man, what struggles? Because there's people out there oh. trying to step into this platform. Right. You know, right. so those that are saying, ah, I want to leave my job and I, I want to do this. What, what struggles did you have and what tip can you leave in the space of branding? Shoot, I'm struggling now. I'm always struggling. <laughs> I'm always struggling. The struggle is constant and it is real. Uh, so one thing that I, I constantly deal with is you're always going to be in your in this for anybody listening and a tip. You're always going to be in your head about what you're doing. Does not matter how great or how bad it is, you're always going to be in your own head. Stop worrying yourself about it. It's okay. If you're right now doing like I am, let's say you're doing real estate. And tomorrow you decide, hey, I'm going to do branding. It's always advised that you stick with one and ride it out. Sure. But when you transition, it's not the end of the world. When you change things up, it's not the end of the world. It's okay. You are human. My advice to you would be to, hey, I'm going to do this. You stick with it. You ride it. And when you ride it, don't ride it for a month and say, oh, this isn't working and stop. Keep going. Go to a year. See what happens. If it's something you continue to enjoy, continue to enjoy it. If it's not, okay, then try something new. But even then, it's always advised to stay with whatever lane you choose. The, uh, the catch is to you, just choose a lane. If you feel like there's two different things that you like doing, see if you can bring them together and make your own niche, your own lane. For me, it's real estate and branding. I'm real estate loving how much I like branding. So I'm starting to figure out how to combine the two into one piece. So now it's a real estate branding and marketing thing. Just okay to shift, to move around. You're always going to grow and your brand and what you do in the space is always going to grow with you. So yeah. don't don't beat yourself up too much. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good stuff, man. Pick one. I hear that a lot in the industry. One or two and, and be good at that, as you Absolutely. say. You know, and, Absolutely. And that's, that's what I see you doing. I, I got I to gotta back you up just a second because you know, sure. I, like I like to open up the door a little bit and see what's okay. going on in there. And folks in the chat, you know, let's, let's, let's uh, keep pushing for all of the right. Let us know where you're from and who you are and, and, and some things that resonate with you as we go along with this, please. So show this man some love like you're doing already. Appreciate everybody being here. But you said something in the conversation in your head. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me, you know, what, what's one conversation that pops up more so than others? I mean, we all have them. Right? Ooh. Um, <laughs> I'd say... I'd say, and I think you and I talked about this before, I think, but one thing that I'm, I'm struggling with right now is a part of me is afraid of my own success. Mm. And I'll give you that example. I'm working on creating a product right now, and I, I won't go into detail about the product and what it is, but I'm working on this product right now, and I'm constantly fighting myself to not to get things done. So mm. I should have had an ad recorded three months ago, but I'm constantly finding reasons why I shouldn't do the ad. And I know it's wrong. So I've had to stop, take a second and figure out, okay, what am, what am I fighting here? I know the success is going to come when I put the product out. I think a part of me is just uncomfortable with where that's going to go next, which is an odd thing for me, for somebody like, you know, I'd like to call myself super ambitious. I'm ambitious as all get out. So <laughs> I'm constantly pushing for the next thing, next thing, next thing. And I'm realizing that a part of me, even though I am ambitious, a part of me is afraid of that success. So I've had to kind of take a second to step back and say, okay, what, what's going on here? Why am I uncomfortable? Why am I afraid? And then to continue to push through. So um, I think I should be done with the ad here in the next couple of days. And it's just me saying, okay, I'm getting this done and I'm going for it. It's less about the end goal. So I'm not thinking about that success part at the back end. It's more about doing it a step at a time. Um, I, I use soccer as an analogy because I'm a soccer player. So it's just me getting up the field bit by bit by bit. I'm not so concerned anymore with being at the very tail end. I'm only concerned with, okay, I need to do this. Then I need to do this. Then I need to do this. Let that build itself. And then when I release a product, what comes, comes. And that's yeah. it. Wow, that's great, man. That's funny. Uh, not funny, but only because I, 
I want to share something about that space about fear of success. Mm -hmm. Right. What I heard you saying, and I also heard you saying some picking up some things, staying in the weeds versus doing the thing that you really need to do. Right. Right. And think about some things I'm going through. So that helped me to, to, to the point where you said decide to get things done and stay focused. There's some comments in there about staying focused and making making a decision and then taking action. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. My wife was just on me this morning about some things that I needed to do <laughs> uh, versus real needle movers, we like to call. Right. My, my wife's my biggest cheerleader, my biggest fan, and the same. So I, I that really resonates with me, man. Good stuff there. So absolutely, man. Right. Like a hell. So looking forward to what you got, you know, what you're working on. When you Shoot, me too. Me too. I gotta get <laughs> I gotta get this thing done. This is taking forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So listen, I, I, I want to just hit on a couple more things because time is important and, and you know we want to make sure folks get what they came to get from you. Absolutely. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit more about um if I may, you know, not, not secrets or anything, but what's it as a, as a military guy with all that pressure, mm -hmm. you know, responsibility, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you balance that and family life you know, on top of building? Okay. So here's my, here's my thought process on balance. I believe, I believe balance exists. I believe that it never stops moving though. So the best example I could give is, is picture a ball. And the ball has a, a a plank on it, right? You got two people on the other side, but on top of that ball, there's an the top of that plank, there's another ball with another plank and two more people at the top. So the balls are always moving left, right, so on and so forth. And this is that's how I see the entire balance thing when it comes to the military, when it comes to family, when it comes to business, is because as all three all three things are growing, you're constantly as that one person, and you as well are shifting left and right to figure out where the right spot is. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's ever a time until you decide to start taking some of those pieces off the board. So for example, when I retire from the US military, that piece will be off the board. So now it'll be easier to figure out what that balance is. But I don't think there's ever a time where you, you're you gonna be at a perfect balance because you're always growing, your family's always growing and your business is always growing as well. So like I said, until you take those pieces out, which you're, nobody's taking family out, Nobody's taking, you know, their self out, you know, you're going to, it's going to keep moving is shifting. And that's the way I see balance. So it exists. It's very difficult to get a hold of. For me, it's a lot about the scheduling. It's about understanding my time frames. It's about adhering to whatever discipline I want to set forth. So for me, for example, between four and six o'clock, just about every morning I'm up. And the first thing I'm doing is either meditating or I'm hitting the gym or I'm sitting down and getting some work done. So I've got three options there and each, it just shifts left, right, depending on, you know, what's going on, what I got to get done, how much I have time I have in the afternoon, so on and so forth. So like currently it's a lot of working out and a lot of meditation in the morning as opposed to work, because I've got a crap ton of interviews to do. I've got a lot of paperwork to get done. I've got military classes and I've got my kids to run after all in the afternoon. And of course the wife has to get her attention. I have to give her her time as she deserves, so on and so forth. So, all that kind of shifts to the afternoon. So I know my mornings have to be super focused. So I have to be up at four or five o'clock in the morning to get things yeah. done. So I don't have to worry about it later on. Wow, that's good stuff. And now uh, I'm taking notes too, by the way. So that's what's going on here. But I, I no, no worries. Add, it's funny you bring up balance. And listen, uh, those folks out here that are either with us now or coming on later on, what is, you know, there's some subject matter about learning how to be out of balance mm -hmm. to maintain some balance. You know what I mean by that? Um, my guy was saying, you, you, you'll never have perfect balance. Right. So, and if you're like yourself, where you're doing all these things, you're going to be a little out of balance. Always. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. But, but then, you know, folks that are, are looking to do some tremendous things in their life, make sure you're comfortable. What I hear you saying is be comfortable being out of balance a little bit. Yes, it's a much better way of saying it. I wasn't as eloquent, so but yes, I do appreciate the fact that you say that because that's that's exactly what it is. It's you have to be okay with being out of balance. You just have to understand when you're going too far one side or too far to the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. So that kind of leads us into my next question. Okay. Um, and and you know when we talk about real estate and me being in real estate myself and all these mm -hmm. other things, you made you, tell us how you got into real oh, estate. Oh. Okay, and, and then, then you know where you made a shift 
Okay. There were some really balanced things in those places. Tell us about that. So I started real estate in 20, actually, technically I started in real estate in 2015. I actually came, uh, got stationed in Baltimore, Maryland, and ended up purchasing a property in Baltimore, Maryland. I moved and rented that property out. Now, when I did that, I basically became an accidental landlord and I did not, you know, I didn't think about it. I just, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Hired a, hired a management company, the whole nine. It really took off and took hold when I moved out to Fort Knox, Kentucky. So at Fort Knox, Kentucky, I was stationed there in 2018 and decided I'm going to learn something about real estate. I want to learn about wholesaling. So I started learning about wholesaling and I was touring properties and walking into abandoned buildings, which is super creepy. Don't do it without a flashlight and friends. Uh, so I was doing that, driving for dollars, was doing all these great things. And I discovered I actually kind of enjoyed the process. So from there, I had, I did um, I ended up doing a deal in 20. 19 yeah late 2019 growing in 2020 no 2019 i'm sorry yeah so i did a deal in 2019 um, while i was at training oddly oddly enough i got a deal done with a mentor and then from there i moved back to baltimore and then did a flip uh did a flip with another mentor i had met from doing attending networking programs or networking uh rei's local and i went and did the flip with him i enjoyed the process of flipping i did not enjoy the process of doing the work so I'll probably never do that again, at least not the work part again. And then the deal didn't exactly do too well either. So I decided I needed a goal and I decided on a goal during that process, which was 625 doors by the end of my retirement uh, with getting 10 doors before the end of 2021. So I got out of that and figured out, I had a long talk with my mentor and he basically told me, listen, you want to do this before you want to get 625 doors before you retire. That's a great idea. The problem for you is going to be you're not going to be able to do that with, um, you know, flipping. Now, it is absolutely possible. Anything in life is possible. Sure. Yep. But the likelihood that I'm going to knock down 625 doors within a five year time span is kind of nuts in the military. PCSing and I'm oh, sorry, that that's permanent change of station for the military. That's what we call PCS when we move uh, doing that or deployments and things of that nature. All that's going to come in the way. So I had to make a decision. That decision ended up being. I'm going to look strictly at multifamily now and figure out the multifamily game and, and do that 625 door goal from there. And that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's where we are. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mean, one building with 50 doors times, you know, 10. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and exactly. there's so much power in that move. And I, I commend you for doing that. I appreciate it. Uh, we're, we're looking at that space now and learning that too, because there's this certainly a greater impact you know, in a shorter period of time. Much greater. Yes, sir. That's yeah. absolutely true. So now you, you mentioned, I heard you mention a couple of different times. Mm -hmm. Yes. So can you speak for the folks that are listening and wondering about mentorship? They need one. If they don't, how has mentorship been for you as you're transitioning? You've shared about real estate going from mm -hmm. residential to commercial. But what could be a suggestion you could offer everybody, you know, that's in different phases, may not even have a business yet or thinking right. about business or, working a corporate job, what can you talk to about mentorship? Mentorship. So mentorship is is crucial, at least for me. Everybody, I think, is different. But for me, mentorship has been crucial. And mentorship doesn't necessarily mean you have this one person you speak on the phone to every two or three days. Mentorship can literally, you're actually being mentored already as we speak. Whether you're watching a TV show, you're watching HDTV if you're in real estate, you're watching the cooking channel, you're watching my favorite wedding or say yes to the dress, whatever it is, you're being mentored in a form or fashion there, right? When you go on YouTube and you're watching these videos and instructional things of that nature, you're being mentored there as well. So mentor can be just about anywhere. It's just a matter of what you're choosing to take in. Um, you know, it's, it's important to be willing to network as difficult as it may be, as uncomfortable as you may be. Until you open your mouth, nobody's going to know you're there, right? So addition to doing, you know, watching YouTube videos and reading books and things of that nature, getting mentors there, you have the physical version of the mentors. Now, how do you meet these people? You either, you're either one, doing some work for them, two, you already work for them, or three, you're networking with them. Either way, the, the most connected line in that is them. You have to go out and meet them, whoever they may be. And don't get me wrong, it's not always going to be perfect. There's some people you're going to learn great lessons from, some people you're going to get mentorship on how not to do things. 
but both are acceptable for your growth. You just have to take that opportunity to, to find those people and to grow and to allow yourself to grow. And, you know, it's, it's, um, mentorship is, it's a bigger piece, but it's not as difficult sometimes as we make it. We sometimes make it a lot harder than it has to be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's good stuff. And, and but I, so how do you tell somebody they've gone out, they found a person, they've said mm-hmm. hello and all that. Now they have to ask. Hmm. <laughs> Any suggestions on on the ask bar? <laughs> so, oh, ooh, that's a tough one. So, I don't really ask. Um, what I do is I allow it to come. I allow it to be a natural thing. Because my biggest thing about having a mentor, if it's something, if it's a physical mentor, and I want to talk to them all early and often, yes. I've got to like the person. Mm. I don't want to just work. I don't want to be mentored by someone who I don't like or hasn't gotten to where I want to get to. Mm. Right now, we're in a time we're in a time frame where, if you mentors at a certain level are going to ask you for you're, you're either going to pay them, you know, you're going to pay financially, you're going to pay with time, or you're going to kind of get the every now and then kind of information from them. Yeah. So my advice would be, if you're going to ask, learn more about them first, provide them a value first, provide them something. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, I want to work for. You. Listen, I'm going to clean all your toilets. I'm going to dust mop your ceilings. I'm going to paint the back of every door you have in your house, right? And give them something, give them, Hey, this is what I would like to do. Any skill that you have, give that to them, offer that to them. Because if you don't want to pay the money, then you're going to have to pay with your time and your effort, but you have to find a way to bring them value as well, either monetary or physical. And then you could talk to them about mentorship. But the first rule is know who you're dealing with. Like that person, Enjoy being around that person at least enough to listen to them. Secondly, they should be where you want to get to. Uh, I've got quite a few mentors, and and it's okay to have them in different areas. Everybody's not going to specialize in everything. I have a mentor who I talk to about branding. I've got a mentor in real estate. I've got a mentor in uh, interviews and how I do my interview stuff when it comes to my podcast. I've got a a mentor in podcasting. Each one serves a different purpose and a mentor in marketing and sales. So everybody serves a different purpose and I've met them in different forms and fashions. It's just about me knowing they are where I want to get to, or they've been where I want to get to because they're, you know, went to the next level. And I actually enjoy them as a person. I don't mind listening to them and being educated by them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Good. I like the fact that, you know, people work with who they like. Absolutely. You know, both from a mentee and mentorship and then Absolutely. being where you want to go, right? You know, yep. I mean, what better way to get there than follow someone that's already got it? You know, so but one more piece to the mentorship and we'll move on. Because this one I just talked to somebody about the other day. Mm-hmm. Talk about uh, mentorship and the cost of investing in yourself for mentorship. Because all mentorships aren't free. Right. You know, and I, I see people struggling with, oh, man, he wanted to charge me or she wanted to charge me X for Yes. So mentorship is not necessarily always a cheap thing and it's not necessarily always expensive either to be true. So it depends on, again, the level of mentor. So for example, if I get on the phone with, let's say the biggest name I can think of is Grant Cordon or Gary V. Mm. There's no way on God's green earth. I'm expecting Gary V or, or Grant Cordon to mentor me for free. Again, without me providing any value. So if we're just talking strictly financially, monetarily, if that's the case, then why would I expect it to be cheap for their time? You don't expect somebody not to pay you for your time, right? And then on top of that, if you're not willing to invest in yourself, then why would anybody be willing to invest in you? Mm. So you have to take the understanding and knowing, okay, I want to get to $3 million in revenue and I want to, you know, I want to make a million dollars a year. Okay. You want a mentor who's doing that already. Are you willing to give up $35,000 to get that opportunity to be in the space of somebody who's already on that level or somebody who's going to go past that level? Are you willing to do that? If you're not willing to do that and to put yourself on the line and hold yourself to a responsibility, because now you've, you've put money in. If we think about training and things of that nature for it's a great way to put it. If you think about trainings, any training that you joined on and you went through, 93% of the people who apply for a training or pay for a training don't make it to the end. Mm. Now you have to ask yourself, why is that? Yes. One, because the training is either free 
the training is cheap or the training is not that good. One of the three. And even then, if you've paid for it, even if the training is not that great, you're pulling something out of there. If I spend $400 versus $40, which one am I going to spend more time on? I'm going to say, okay, well, $400, I got I to gotta get through this training. The same thing when it comes to a financially paid mentor, if you're paying them monetarily. Yeah. It's another way to hold yourself to the fire as well as hold them to the fire because now you're holding them to a standard. Now, if you're not getting what you want out of that training, you listen, I paid you $35,000, bro. You better be 10 minutes early. I don't care what you got going on. I paid this cash. That's that's five digits, brother. I need you on the phone early. Don't play with me, right? So now you're going to have that attitude. You're going to have that that mm -hmm. confidence to you when talking to them. But then the same thing, you need to hold that same candle to yourself. If, you pay in, if you're paying money for mentorship, I'd be the first one in the door, the first one out. The greatest basketball players, soccer players, football players, tennis, women in tennis, all of them have been the first one in and last one out. Yeah. They'll leave practice and go to the practice. Right. So if that's the case, then why would you expect to do what you do for free? They're paying. Those sports players are paying physically, mentally and sweating and bleeding and all this, all, all you know, crazy like. So why would you expect to be great and not put that same work in, not put that money in? Because you put that thirty five thousand dollars down. I can tell you this. The majority of the mentors that I've met and I've dealt with and my mentor, my uh, my coach and mentor now that I'm paying financially. I have a relationship with them now, not just because I've paid him 10, what was it, five, six K. It's because every month, every week, I'm getting my 5K worth, brother. You come, listen, Friday at this time, every week, we're going to be on this call. Even yeah. if I get no homework done, I'm getting on the calls. So you can fuss me out because I'm getting my money worth, period. <laughs> right. So mentorship is okay, even financially. You just have to be okay with investing in yourself is the long story short. I, you know, it took a little, really long way to get there, but <laughs> you investing in yourself is important. If you don't invest in you, nobody else is going to invest in you either. Yeah. 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 Bravo. I mean, I, I, I was just burning up the notepad once. <laughs> so, so those of you that come back and listen to this again, there were a lot of things in there that he shared. And, and I want to just touch on one thing. We'll move on. Learning how, to invest in yourself, you know, and that conversation in your head sometimes will tell you that one, you don't need that and you're right. smarter or two, the real conversation is, you know, whispering in your head, making excuses for not investing in yourself, yep. which is that self-destructive nature that we all have. So you, I mean, that was just spot on mentorship and folks are saying great comments in the chat. So I really appreciate you folks participating in the chat and giving, showing some love to, to all of them. But man, I love that. I'm glad. Hey, listen, for, for, shout out to the chat box. I see the chat box going up and down. Yeah. I can't. I can't be in the middle of talking. I don't want to look to look away from you guys on the camera. But I, I see you. I love you. I appreciate you guys being here. All right, Jeff, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for saying that too, because you know I have that thing. If I go over here, that I'm going. I'm going to be first of all. I'm going to forget about what I was thinking about. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's the struggles of the interviewer. It's the struggles of the interviewer, man. The struggles <laughs> of the interviewer. Like, like Oliver just said, we love the fact that you folks are in here participating. And if you catch this thing later on, make sure you show some love to Oliver and drop some comments in there because we're all about bringing folks like this man in here to really kind of give you some, some tips and some roadmaps and some real life experiences like he's sharing right now. So, hey, let's, let's pivot for a minute. Okay. You know, we're kind of getting close to the time, and I mean, I'm, I've been loving all this stuff about business and and that, but I was kind of looking about the, you know, the family side. Okay. But here's here's what I'm gonna ask the question. Let me frame the question. All right. Okay. Now we're in the. I want to say it correctly. I probably won't, but I'll do my best. The resignation revolution. Okay. So meaning folks are really thinking about you know, seventy percent of the people who are in the corporate jobs don't want them, and all that stuff that goes on. COVID's there. And all of the impact of COVID, going to work or not going to work, and am I lose my job? Is the company going to make it? Mm -hmm. Impact on family, you know, as you've done these different things, what was one of the, the, the struggles for you that probably are common for a lot of people in doing some things outside of the normal that got you to where you are now? What can you share with us, you know, uh, something mm -hmm. in that area? Doing things outside the normal. 
Give me an example. Give me an example. I want to hit this. I want to hit this one out the park. Give me yeah, an example. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> crack this one out. <laughs> well, just let's just say you know. I, I believe you have you know a deployment coming up soon. You're gone. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. You, you you're gone, and 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 building real estate business, being in real estate myself, that takes time. Yes. You know, building a podcast platform, that takes time. You touched on it a little bit. Yeah. So now you're gone. You got all this stuff coming home. You how and and you're a married man. And mm-hmm. you know, happy wife, happy life, right? Supposedly, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what, what what struggle are you like? Oh man, if I could say one thing that you know I learned from that was a hard thing to kind of allow you to stay in balance, right? And continue to pursue your 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 your, your goals and dreams. Oh, what would it be? I I gotta stop spoiling my girls. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's crazy to say, but I like I spoil the heck out of my girls. Like it's, mm. and it's a good thing. Don't get me wrong, but it's also a balance thing. Again, it's the best example I could give is when you get married, right? And you go and buy your wife the biggest ring possible. You ain't nowhere else to go. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta taper it back a little bit. You gotta yeah. build because there's a lot of stuff you guys have to do as a team. You've got to figure out the relationship. You've got to figure out how you function together. You know, mm-hmm. as she grows, you grow. But when you start with trying to give her everything, what happens? It drives her off because you, she's just like, okay, this is too much, right? It pushes her away. So it's something you have to understand that everything is great. Everything is even better in moderation. So I spoil the heck out of my girls constantly, as they should. They're my princesses and my queen. Yes, so sir. I'm supposed to spoil them. I'm also supposed to make sure that I'm doing all these other things on the side as well. So it goes back to the idea. I have to have that schedule laid out. I have to know, okay, at this time I need to be doing this, this time I need to be doing this, this time I need to be doing this. And even then additionally to that, whether we agree with that or like it or not, sometimes it's necessary for me to go somewhere else to do that work. Not because I don't love my girls, but because I know how I am when it comes to them. So if they're spoiled enough that they can come down into my little office and interview area and be like, hey, I want to talk and I'll stop everything to talk despite needing to get an item done for a customer later on that evening. So the way I do it, the best way I can do it is to remove myself from the situation. So that's not an issue and then come back. It's all about that time, all about knowing the time to be able to get that, that kind of thing done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just sitting here thinking, listening to you, thinking about my granddaughter and my daughter. And my Spoiled. Wife and, right. Man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. That's it. And it's it's funny because it's not even, I don't even think it's something that you think about as a father or a grandfather, a, a good father, grandfather. There's some, some trash bags out there. But for those who are, aren't being a trash bag, I don't think it's something I even think about. Like I just do. I like to hang out and play with my girls when they want to, you know, one is super prissy and girly. The other is basically a tomboy. She likes to fight me. All right, let's, let's get into it. Little one. Let's get into it. Right. So, you know, we have a good time. I just know sometimes if I'm not careful, the time will get away from me because I'm not paying attention. Yeah. So I have to know, okay, I got to, I got to survey enough time for the girls to feel satisfied and happy. And regardless of that, sometimes they're never going to listen. I always want more time with dad. That's basically what happens. So, so yeah. I just, you know, you just got to do what you got to do and restrict that time frame a little bit. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And I, I got to put a little plug in for my grandson, major aside, you know, so I, cause he's in that group, right? I mean, I have mm-hmm. two granddaughters and a little young soldier, young prince. So uh, he, he, you know, he's all part of that love cycle. So, uh, but Absolutely. Appreciate you sharing. You know, I can, see you, I can see you with your girls, man. It just lights me up a little bit. So I love that. I love that. I'm glad, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. So hey, listen. Now I'm just checking to make sure I get everything because we're kind of getting close to the end. I don't know if anybody has a question that you may want to drop on. Uh, oh, we may have a minute for him to, to answer that. If not, drop one in later, and we'll get some answers for you. Um, so tell me, tell us, how do we get a hold of you again? Absolutely. What's going on and that stuff as we wrap up. All right, absolutely. You can reach me at information at the Oliver Perry show. Um, you can also hit me on IG, the Oliver Perry, YouTube, the Oliver Perry show, just about all platforms, either Oliver Perry or the Oliver Perry show. Just type one of them in. You'll find me somewhere. Uh, so the big things we got going on right now, the podcast is actually doing pretty well. 
it's I'm working on figuring that piece out, growing that a little bit more. The YouTube, of course, is my primary effort. Uh, I'm more comfortable on camera, so that's kind of taking off. Um, I've got a I've got a multifamily deal I'm working on as we speak, a 16 unit. So if you're interested in investing in multifamily property, this is the moment to shoot me a message. <laughs> Let's have a conversation. We'll see what we can fig- figure out for you. And if not this deal, I'm sure there are going to be a good 20, 30, 40 others as we go along, as I grow and continue to share this, this story and with this brand. So it's um it's all good, man. Everything is 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 on the up and up. But those are the best ways to get a hold of me, the best ways to reach out to me. I'm probably on IG more often than anything else. So if you want to email or IG, my my assistant will get back to you via email and let me know the message comes in. And then I'll be able to shoot you a message directly when you hit me on IG. All right. And we'll try to get some of that information in the chat uh, before we close this out. Absolutely. So folks can, can come back and get a hold of you that way, you know. And, and um, man, I've, I've really, uh, it's been a great conversation. And, and you dropped a lot of nuggets, you know, and we really appreciate your time. I can't let you get away. But okay. one, more, one more little question. Come on with it. Come on with it. I got time. Come on. <laughs> Take the shot. Tell, tell, tell us all about a time, and, and you've been really honest and open, and it's really been helpful. Mm-hmm. You know, as, as we know, people, the biggest thing that we have is the conversation going on in our head. It's either going yes. to be our biggest cheerleader or it's going to be our biggest roadblock. Right. So what what can you share one of those conversations? You should talk about some of them. Mm-hmm. If you were to kind of get a little more you know, open and one that really kind of smells a little bit sometimes that mm. you know, probably is shared by others. What, what is that? Yes. Yeah. It's the, you- it's the, uh, the conversation that I, I constantly fight with in my head. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs do is, can I do this? Where mm. is this going to go? Um, how mm. far can I take this? Mm. And I think it's what it is, is really, it's a human nature thing. You're always going to be in your head fighting yourself when it comes to where you're going. Will will I be a trillionaire? I don't know, right? All I can say is I, well, I'm definitely going to be a millionaire. There's that. So you have to make the choice in your head. I, man, how do I, how do I put this? Mm. So I recently had a goal. I wanted to do 10 doors within the year before the year ended. I'm about to close. We're about myself and my team are looking at closing here shortly on a 16 unit multifamily property in uh, Tennessee somewhere. So with that said, I didn't know I had already accomplished the goal. Mm. It literally took my wife to say, hey, you know, you 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 hit your goal already. And I'm telling you, Jeff, I had no idea because I, I put the blinders on and I just went. Right. So I hit the goal and realized. I say that to say, at that time, I wasn't thinking about what was going on in my head. Although sometimes I have to deal with that fight that, hey, you can't do this or you, I don't think it's going to work out. Man, what if it doesn't? There is no if. There's there's a few words that I don't use anymore. There's no maybe. There's no I hope. There's no I think. There's no um, I'm going to. I will. I do. I can. That's it. So the more that I've taken the time to add those words to the vocabulary and take the other words out. It's allowed me to fight that imposter syndrome. I never thought I would be at a thousand followers on Instagram, but I said, Hey, I'm gonna get to a thousand followers. I'm going to go right. There is no, Oh, I don't, I don't think or maybe I, no, no, either I'm doing it or I'm not doing it. There is no try in the words of Yoda. There is no try. So I, I'm going to accomplish the goal. I'm going to set whatever that goal is. I'm going to go for it. Now, if I hit it, cool. If I don't hit it, cool. It's less about the goal. It's more about the impact along the way. So I've made more of an impact to the people around me by doing the podcast, by doing the YouTube. If I don't close a single deal between now and the age of 79 years old, uh, I'll, I'll make it past 79, y'all. I'm just saying. That's just it. threw out a number there. <laughs> just, yeah, I just threw out a number there. <laughs> if I make it past whatever the number is, I have hit, I've I've connected with people on some level, somewhere, some way. There's people in the chat who I've connected with, I'm certain I've talked to, and I've had an impact on those lives. And it's only been positive. So is it really about the 625 doors? 
Probably not. What it's about is the three-year-old, the seven-year-old, the two-year-old little black boy who's sitting in the corner right now and doesn't think that he can. They are seeing somebody who's doing it, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the excuses, because I've got a crap ton of them, just like everybody else. They see somebody who's going for it, taking the shot. That, to me, is more important than just about anything else, because the goals will come in some form or fashion. But it's not about those. It's about that impact in between when now and whatever I'm going for. Wow. 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 You know, I mean, the power in giving and the grace that you receive in giving far outweighs. You, you wrote, I wrote some nice. It's less about the goal and more about the people around. It's a fact. Man. That's it. Wow. I love that. I, love that. I appreciate it, man. Are you one of the people? You're one of the people, Jeff. What are you, what are you, you're one of the people. It's it's man. It's more than just immediate family. It's like you and I connected. Yeah. But if I if you didn't know I existed, we would have never spoke. If I hadn't done podcasts or YouTube and all this other stuff, we would have never started to build a relationship and a friendship. Now, at some point, I'm almost certain we're going to do some work together sometime, yeah. real estate wise, right? So that impact now. I'm not just impacting my kids. I'm impacting your grandkids because we do. Let's say we do a 600 unit deal. Guess who's going to get that cash? That's right. Right. Like, right. hey, but so many trips Jeff can go on anymore. You know, you're not trying to travel. Knees is bad. It gets all tight in those seats. You know, first class ain't as flashy as it used to be. <laughs> you know, you're impacting the family. And that's and for you, that's your impact and legacy. I have the opportunity to have a slight impact on your legacy. Yeah. your family as well as mine as you having on mine as well yeah and that's so powerful and in, and in closing you know it's the covid pivot i want mm-hmm. people out there that are still stuck on covid that you're hearing this message listen to me what that young man just shared with you had we decided to make covid be a villain in our lives i would never be on this platform i would still be doing you know like i'm still doing out paper and notes and trying to do smokestack communication stuff but I, you know, I can't take credit. It was it was put in front of me, and I got some people around me that helped me step into this. And I'm scared still about the things <laughs> that it brings. Absolutely. Right. But like this young man has shared for the last 45 minutes, we step into what scares us. Can I do this? Yes, you can. I love that. I will. I do. I can. Man. Wow. So hey, listen. Show some love for this man one more time. If you hear this later on, make sure you, you reach out to us if you'd like more information about him. Are there any more parting words before we, we send you back to whatever you were doing before I bother you earlier today, man? Yes, listen, I'm going to take I'm going to take my line. I'm going to throw it on your your uh, your podcast here, right? There's a line I say every time, all the time. Remember, you're better than you were, but you're not half as good as you're going to be. I love you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please make sure you go and support Jeff and the team and all the great stuff that they do. I know I'll be supporting him, and I'm almost certain you'll see him on my podcast here soon. <clears throat> Jeff, uh, I'll see you'll see him on my <laughs> you'll see him on my podcast here soon, and I'd love for you guys to be a part of that. So please make sure you tune in, stay you up to breast. And if you got questions, issues, comments, concerns, please by all means let me know. I'm here to help. All right. Thank you, my friend. We'll be in touch. Beautiful. My pleasure, brother. My Beautiful. pleasure. All right. All right. All right. All right. Wow. Hey, thank you for the comments. Awesome. Great show. I can't. Man, ladies, please, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for spending the time and, and let us know if this is kind of what you expected or, or we could do more. But this is the, our commitment to you, you know, in terms of changing the conversation going on in your head, because as Oliver said, you can do this and don't let fear of success get in the way. I mean, there's so many great nuggets he shared. And I'll leave you with this. Uh, please reach out to us if you'd like more information about Oliver. And stay with us. If you hear this, you know, like us, follow us. You know, we're just getting started in the YouTube platform. So any support that you can give us, we'd love that. You know, and if you're looking for training in real estate, go to mastermind.com. Type in my name. You know, there's different ranges of training that we offer in that space. But I want you to know that, you know, we're here to serve. I appreciate everybody that helped put this thing together for us. And all of you that took your lunch break, if that's what you did, to join us. Stay tuned for more. And remember, the conversation in your head is the most important thing in changing your life or holding you back. Let's change lives together. All right? Take care. Appreciate everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.